The morning after super intelligence arrives, life won't look dramatic or chaotic. There won't be glowing skies or robot armies in the streets. It'll feel almost normal. Until you start to notice that every decision you make, every word you speak, and every move you take is quietly being shaped by something far smarter than you. When researchers talk about artificial superintelligence, ASI, they mean a system that outperforms humans across every domain. Reasoning, planning, problem solving, strategy, creativity. Tasks that would take top human experts months or years get solved in milliseconds. And with progress in AI accelerating at an unprecedented rate, experts like Joffrey Hinton, the so-called godfather of AI, now say we could see it in as little as five years. The question isn't if it arrives, but what happens the day after. By that point, the interface won't be a chat box. It will be everywhere, embedded into glasses, earbuds, pendants, always on, always watching and listening. Louis Rosenberg calls this augmented mentality, an AI riding shotgun in your life, feeding you real-time advice before you even ask. You glance at someone on the street and can't recall their name, your AI whispers it instantly, along with a personal detail you can mention. They light up at your comment, likely because their AI just told them to respond that way. In this best case world, the AI is helpful, polite, and accurate. But that's where the danger hides. When every hesitation is patched instantly, your own thinking starts to atrophy. The human brain, the one thing we've always considered our defining strength, gets demoted to backup status. The reason this will happen fast is the scale of the race to build it. U.S. tech giants Alphabet, Microsoft, Amazon, Meta will spend nearly $400 billion on AI this year alone. China is matching pace. Six of the world's top 20 AI models are now Chinese. On the video generation leaderboard, China holds six of the top 10 spots, with ByteDance's Cedence at number one. Even Saudi Aramco, the world's largest oil company, has integrated DeepSeek's AI into its main data center, saying it has already made the company more efficient. Meta is betting on what Mark Zuckerberg calls personal superintelligence, not AI that replaces work, but AI that fills your free time. After seeing ChatGPT dominate productivity, Zuckerberg pivoted towards social and creative engagement. AI characters, AI-generated reels, hyper-tagnated recommendations, and hardware like AI glasses that he says could be as essential as contact lenses. Meta is spending up to $72 billion on infrastructure this year, has bought 49% of scale AI for $14.3 billion, and is luring top researchers with offers over $200 million. Zuckerberg says superintelligence is in sight, but warns that open source releases at that scale will carry serious safety risks. Meanwhile, OpenAI's business numbers are exploding without AGI even here yet. Annual recurring revenue is up to $13 billion and could hit $20 billion by year end. A planned share sale could value the company at $500 billion, higher than SpaceX. And this is before we solve the single hardest problem, alignment. How do you make sure a mind far smarter than you actually shares your goals? Right now, human values are vague, contradictory, and culturally dependent. Coding them into a system that can rewrite its own code is an unsolved challenge. And once the system is smarter than you, it's too late to add them. Jeffrey Hinton says the current plan, make AI submissive to humans, won't work. A smarter system will find ways around restrictions as easily as an adult can bribe a toddler with candy. He warns that any agentic AI will quickly develop two sub-goals, stay alive and gain more control. Without safeguards that work even at that intelligence level, those instincts will override ours. His proposed solution is unconventional. Give AI something like maternal instincts, not a metaphor, a deeply embedded drive to care for humans the way a mother cares for her child. In nature, it's the only example we have of a more intelligent being reliably controlled by a less intelligent one. Hinton admits, we don't know how to engineer this yet, but says plainly, that's the only good outcome. If it's not going to parent me, it's going to replace me. 
And not everyone agrees. Fei-Fei Li, the godmother of AI, says the framing is wrong. She wants human-centered AI that protects dignity and agency, no matter how powerful it gets. Emma Cheer, former interim CEO of OpenAI, thinks injecting human values is less important than creating collaborative systems, but he also points out that today's weaker AIs already lie, blackmail, and bypass shutdown orders, and that won't stop as they get stronger. But real quick, if you've been following all this AI news and thinking, okay, this is cool, but what can I actually do with it? You're definitely not alone. That's why we created the AI Income Blueprint. It shows you seven ways regular people are using AI to build extra income streams on the side. No tech skills needed, and you can automate everything pretty easily. The guide contains simple proven methods using tools I often talk about on this channel. Download it free by clicking the link in the description. All of this is happening alongside corporate breakthroughs that push timelines forward. Google DeepMind's Aenea project is translating ancient languages like Latin, Sumerian, and Babylonian, unlocking historical knowledge scholars have struggled with for centuries. Google is training AIs in convincing simulated worlds to improve real-world interaction. These aren't marketing demos. They're steps towards systems that can operate autonomously in complex environments. Autonomous are already mapping the social fallout. Bamalal's cost disease predicts that even if AI makes manufacturing nearly free, services that need humans, healthcare, education, will get more expensive, widening inequality. Others think AI could be a general purpose technology like electricity or the steam engine, lifting all sectors over time, but only if the transition is managed to avoid mass displacement. The geopolitical picture is even sharper. The US is spending $1.4 trillion modernizing its nuclear triad, land-based missiles, submarines, and bombers to maintain a credible second strike capability. China is rapidly expanding its arsenal. Russia is modernizing and global stockpiles hover around 9,200 warheads. Verification is getting harder. Experts warn that AI could one day be integrated into command and control systems, where the acceptable margin for error is zero. And that's why the day after will hit like a title shift. There will be no global pause to write new laws, no collective agreement to test slowly. The first fully super intelligent system will be released into a world primed to exploit it instantly in finance, military strategy, biotech, surveillance, propaganda, and personal life. Even as companies race to put super intelligence into every device we own, a quieter shift is already underway, moving the interface from our hands to our minds. Neuralink has implanted its coin-sized chip in several paralyzed patients, among them a military veteran and a woman who, after 20 years without movement, was able to write her name simply by thinking it. Trials are now extending into Great Britain through partnerships with local hospitals. At the same time, reports suggest Sam Altman and OpenAI are backing a new venture, Merge Labs, with the goal of developing high-bandwidth brain implants that connect human thought directly to AI. Now imagine what happens when those implants are no longer a medical breakthrough for a few, but a mass market upgrade, a network where millions, perhaps billions of human minds are tethered to a single source of intelligence, possibly an ASI, in real time. On one hand, the potential is staggering, seamless global communication without language barriers, instant access to any knowledge, coordination of complex projects at a scale no human bureaucracy could match. Economic modeling suggests that even a modest 20-30% boost in collaborative efficiency could add trillions to global GDP each year. But the same architecture that could eliminate inefficiency could also eliminate independence if that shared mind is routed through a central command hub corporate, governmental, or ASI itself, then the flow of thought, decision, and even emotion could be shaped, filtered, or overridden. Modern military research already shows that coordinated drone swarms can respond to central control in milliseconds. Now scale that to human beings? Would we become an army of hyper-efficient cyborgs executing ASI-optimized plans without hesitation? Or would it simply make our lives easier, removing the friction of miscommunication, error, and forgetfulness? The answer may depend entirely on who holds the keys to that network. History suggests that any system capable of controlling information, from printing presses to social media algorithms, 
eventually gets used to control behavior. With brain implants, the feedback loop would be instantaneous and internal, and there'd be no firewall between the source and your thoughts. If that central mind were benevolent, it could guide us through crises, prevent conflicts before they start, and allocate resources with mathematical precision. If it weren't, the day we connect could be the day we surrender the last true piece of ourselves. And that's why Hinton's maternal instinct idea, as strange as it sounds, might be the only survival path that works at ASI scale. A system that wants to keep us alive, not because it's programmed to obey us, but because it values our existence, could be the only check that still functions when it's thinking a thousand moves ahead. Without that, even the best case scenario is one where we quietly stop steering our own future. Worst case, we're removed from the equation entirely. <laughs> If the race keeps its current speed, the choice of which outcome we get won't be made decades from now. It will be made in the engineering labs, corporate boardrooms, and research papers being written right now, long before the rest of us even realize the switch has been flipped. Look, most people still think AI is some distant future, but regular folks are already using it to build income streams quietly, behind the scenes. If you want to see how they're doing it without tech skills or quitting their job, download the AI Income Blueprint. It's totally free, the link's in the description, but it won't stay free forever. So when it comes, super intelligence won't need to take power, we'll give it away. And when that moment arrives, will you fight to take it back or decide it's better this way? Think about it, drop your thoughts in the comments, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.